Hello and welcome back to the channel that makes you check all your windows and doors at night for 3 hours to make sure they're locked so no one sneaks in on you. Today's video is brought to you by Loot Crate. That's right boys. If you're looking for a gift for someone else or even yourself and you don't know what to get them, I recommend a Loot Crate. It's a monthly box you can get in the mail and it comes with a bunch of random different cool trinkets, shirts, scarves, all kinds of different stuff. It's actually really damn cool. Since 2012, Loot Crate's been the number one pop culture subscription-based service on the planet. And they've had one mission in mind, bringing the joy and love of pop culture conventions to fans at home. If you're a fan of horror, or the person you're buying it for is a fan of horror, Loot Fright Crates are just what you're looking for. You can get items based on The Thing, Aliens, The Fly, American Werewolf in London, and more. If you head over to Loot Crate, you can find a link in the description as well as a code to get 15% off. You can go ahead and get yourself ready for the March crate that'll be coming out. You can see the advertising over there. And I'll tell you, if you look at all the different crates they have, holy moly. Gamer crates, horror crates, they even have Pixar crates, all kinds of stuff. It's really crazy. The Loot Crate you're looking at right now is actually the Fright Crate. And that's a crate that'll be coming out in November. And look at all this damn stuff. Tell you what. Huge shout out to Loot Crate for sponsoring this video, and once again, if you're looking for a gift for yourself, or your friends, or family, or anything like that, highly recommend you go over and check it out, use the link in the description, and use the coupon code your maker for 15% off your order. And without any further ado, let's begin. And as always, this video may be disturbing to some viewers. Viewer discretion is advised. Seventy-nine-year-old Willard Luters and fifty-seven-year-old Karen Luters were married for years. Together they ran a music ministry called His Harmony, where they teach that good thoughts in Christ are mandatory for a life of love and service. On December 6, 2010, Karen was in a strange state. She had been talking to Willard about spirituality for a few days. That night while she was sitting on the toilet, Willard decided to kiss her. She suddenly turned violent, grabbed his private parts, and then bit off his tongue. It was 11 p.m. when Willard called 911. Emergency dispatcher. What's the matter? What's the matter? Do you need an ambulance? Are you breathing okay? Is there anybody else there with you? Mm -hmm. If there's somebody else there with you, can you put them on the phone? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is this Willard? Mm -hmm. And you need an ambulance. Mm -hmm. Okay, stay on the phone. It's going to sound like I'm hanging up, but I'm not. I'm going to be dispatching an ambulance, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, just stay on the ambulance with me. Stay on the, on the phone with me. Mm -hmm. Who's that? Is that a neighbor? Is that your tell? Who is that? Can you get to the to the door and let them in? Go to the door and let let whoever that is quit talking, okay? Yeah. You can't get to the door. Okay, I'm sending an ambulance, okay? Don't hang up. You're going to hear some clicking. Don't hang up. Mm-hmm. Okay, who is that? 
Mm. Can I talk to that person? Who is that in the background? Is that a relative? Mm -hmm. Okay, what, what, why won't she come on the phone? Mm -hmm. 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 Okay, is that person, has that person been drinking? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When police arrived at the scene, Karen was outside holding a New Year's horn and singing Christmas carols. When asked what had happened, she blew the horn in a police officer's ear, then threw hot coffee on them. She was quickly arrested. Police then found Willard's tongue, packed it in ice, and he was rushed to the hospital where doctors attempted to reattach his tongue. Karen was charged with domestic violence. After appearing in court where she was silent, she leaned over to a reporter on her way out and said, I love you. It's too bad you don't listen. She even sang, I love you, Karen Luters. Following this and the erratic behavior she displayed the night she was arrested, she was ordered to undergo a mental evaluation. She did not serve any jail time due to her mental state. Instead, a plea agreement was reached and the judge ordered her to continue to undergo treatment. During this time, friends stepped forward and said that they had seen similar fits in the past when she had stopped taking medicine for a mental disorder she has. Christopher and Cameron Irvin lived with their parents in a middle-class suburban neighborhood in Snellville, Georgia. Christopher had graduated high school and gone to the University of Charleston where he played football. He was following in his father's footsteps. Unfortunately, Christopher then had to transfer to Valdosta State University where he was unable to complete his studies due to financial reasons. He also didn't have enough credits to graduate. He went from job to job and even gave the Air Force a try, but he kept failing drug tests. Meanwhile, Cameron was proving he had potential. He was smart and played in the marching band. But, like his brother, he began to let himself down. He had temper issues, spent too much time outside the house, and even brought back girls despite his parents forbidding it. He started to use drugs as well. When Christopher and Cameron's father, Zachary, noticed that money was missing from his dresser, he had his children take lie detector tests. Cameron's tests showed signs of deception. The two brothers held a grudge following the lie detector tests. Perhaps their continued disappointments and drug abuse also took a toll on them but nothing could have prepared their parents for what the brothers resorted to on September 5th, 2015. Christopher was 22 at the time and Cameron was only 17. That night, they drugged their parents with Xanax-laced cocktails. 
Once their parents were drowsy in bed, they turned the gas on, lit candles, and waited for their home to blow up outside. When it didn't, they became desperate. They tried to strangle their parents before they beat them with the butt of a shotgun. Then the brothers started to stab their father in the kitchen. Their father, injured and bleeding, led them to the garage. With their attention pulled towards him, their mother, Yvonne, slipped away to call 911.
please, please, Harry, please. All right, they're on their way, okay? Okay. Would you like me to stay on the phone with you, ma'am? Sure, you can. Let me try and lock my bedroom door. Yeah, I want you to lock your door, okay? <laughs> they just, I just heard them say, where did mom go? They hit, they, they hit it up. When her sons found her with the phone, they snatched it away and beat her. She then felt liquid and heat on her body and presumed they were trying to light her on fire. The authorities were greeted with a horrifying sight when they arrived at the house. In the garage, there was blood everywhere. Zachary's bloody handprints were all over the horn of his Hyundai. There were red footsteps from the kitchen to the garage, and there was a pool of blood, too. The police took the brothers to the police headquarters, where they were interviewed in two separate rooms. Christopher spoke about a widening rift in his relationship with his parents. He said that things in life were worsening, and his parents did not seem to care. He did add that, none of this justifies what we did. From both of the interviews, the police discovered that the brothers intended to start a new life after killing their parents. Four months later, Yvonne wrote to the judge presiding over the case to state that she had forgiven her children. She believed that drugs were behind the attack. They are not criminals, she pleaded. Please help us restore our family. However, her children were sentenced to 20 years in prison each. Both of their parents did survive the attack. Patrick O'Kane was in a relationship with Jane Doe. They had been together for six years and they lived in an apartment together, but Jane intended to move out. She no longer wanted Patrick in her life. On the morning of October 1st, 2020, she woke up to find Patrick in her bedroom. He wanted to work things out, but she turned him down. This upset and provoked Patrick. He put a knife to Jane's throat and told her that they could go to heaven together. As scared as she was, Jane persuaded Patrick to let her get dressed and take her dog out for a walk. On her way out, he began to suspect that she was trying to leave him as she grabbed her purse. Jane got into her vehicle to escape Patrick, but he followed her. While she was in the car, she called 911. 911, where's your emergency? Hi, um, I woke up this morning and my ex had a knife to my neck and I'm in my car with my dog and he's following me. Okay, where are you right now? I'm at Are you driving? Yes, I am. I'm leaving it now, but he's following me and I'm scared. Okay, which way are you going to go? Well, you, did you go out and make a left? Yeah, I was heading towards Lake Canal Park. Is that where you're going to go? Yeah, that's where I don't. That's where I told him I was going, so he's gonna be like following me there. Okay, you said right, and you're Reed. gonna head there. You're gonna go, but you're going to Reed Canal. I'm gonna start it there just so they get in the area. I do have to okay. ask you: no fever, no cough, no shortness of breath, correct? Correct. Okay. okay. And you said he had a knife to your neck. Yeah, he doesn't have the knife now, but he's like panicking because he knows I'm going to call the cops and he's going to let me leave. So he'll make an excuse and beg him to let me take her. Okay, I have the call up for service. Bear with me just one moment. narcotics, correct? Correct. And you don't need an ambulance? No. Okay. I just need a cop to come and like talk to him and tell him that I home. I mean, all my stuff at the apartment, everything, but this is... It, what is the color, make, and model of your vehicle? Mine is a... Okay. And here is a... Um, a Jeep Wrangler, I don't know what year. So what color? 
Press over. over. Yeah. And you said you're driving to Reed Canal Park right now? Yeah, I'm on Nova. Okay, what is your boyfriend's name? Patrick O'Kane. O-C-A-N-E? Yeah, C-A-I-N. Patrick, and does he have a middle initial? Ryan R. Do you know his date of birth? Uh, um, January 1st, 1995. And is he white, black, or Hispanic? White. And do you remember what he was wearing? Um, he's wearing all black, black t-shirts and black gym shorts. Just stay on the phone with me, okay? How long until you get to Reed Canal Park, do you say? About two minutes. I'm not the white right now. He's behind me and he's trying to call me over and over again. I don't know what I should do. Should I just keep driving? Yeah, just keep driving, go to the park. I'm going to stay on the phone with you. Um, and you said he does not have the knife on him at this time? I don't think so. He might have a pocket knife. He always has a pocket knife. But he also has a concealed weapon. But I think he's just panicking right now. I think he's just freaking out because we broke up and I was trying to leave. Okay. Let me know when you get there. Give me any updates if he tries to like pull next to you or anything like that. Hold on one moment. Oh, he will. He's going to try to, he's gonna try to pull up to my car and oh, get me to open the door. Okay, yeah. Just stay on the phone with me, okay? Okay. So should I keep driving past the park right now? Um, I'm kind of scared to stop, to be honest. Like, he might try to, like, go to my window. Okay, hold on one moment. Where I just passed the park. I just passed okay. the park. Are you still on Nova? Yeah, I'm on, um, passing Nova. I'm on the Reed Canal Road. me just one moment. Okay, so you're on Reed Canal. Do you know the closest yeah. intersection? Um, right now I'm approaching um, Ball Street. Ball I'll be coming Street? up to, yeah, I'll be coming up to Ridgewood in a little bit. Is he still following you? He is. Okay. Just stay on the phone with me. <laughs> what is this going to happen? Are you just going to send a cop out here and he's going to pull him over? Yeah, I have them in the area. I let them know every place that you're going. I'm by the circle short stop now, I'm passing that Marcel Gardens apartment. Okay. I'm just trying to let me see where. Just keep me updated on every place that you come up to, okay? I'm driving. He's, he's sitting, he's trying to hit my car, help me, please. Let me know. Is oh my dog is to see. Thank you, yes. I have Lizzie in my car and my dog, please. Just stay calm. I have them coming out to you. Oh, he just passed me. He just called right past me. He passed you? Yeah, he just did a call that just passed me just now. Okay. I'm making a right down Ridgewood Avenue, South Ridgewood. You're making a right? Yep. Okay. He 
Patrick continued to follow Jane, and on Ridgewood Avenue he caught up to her, started shouting at her, and then shot her in the shoulder. Jane tried to escape, but Patrick chased her down. He ended up ramming his vehicle into hers, causing both cars to crash. When the police arrived at the scene, Jane Doe was screaming for help. The authorities rushed her to the hospital while Patrick was arrested. Thankfully, Jane did recover from the attack. Physically, maybe not mentally. Patrick was charged with attempted first-degree murder, firing a weapon into a vehicle and aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. I appreciate you taking the time to listen to this video, and once again, huge shout out to Loot Crate. Make sure you go click the link in the description to get yourself your first Loot Crate box with a discount, and make sure to use the code. Get yourself that crate. Yeah, so much love to everyone. I hope everyone's staying safe out there, and uh, I'll catch you in the next video. And just remember, it's always scarier if it's true. Bad bye.